The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new form component that matches the original Twitter form. Well, almost. We'll ignore these buttons for now and only focus on text tweets. We'll cover media uploads in a future video. So let's create a component. I'll go to resources, JavaScript components, new file, tweet form.view, template. I write some gibberish for now, so and script export default something and let's import it tweet form and let's also use it here refresh the browser and here it is now let's add the elements I'll give it some padding and then if I go to tweet, I can grab the avatar here. And of course we don't have context, so I'll have profile and profile. And this will be a prop we'll have to accept. So props, profile, which is an object. And of course we need to make sure we pass that in. So profile. Profile, and let's see if we have a profile prop. We don't. And this home page component is rendered by the home controller. So we need to make sure that we send the profile as a prop. So profile user request for user. So what we're doing here is we are passing profile as a prop for the home page component and we receive it here and then we pass it on to the tweet form component and we receive it here and then we are displaying the profile photo URL. Let's go to the browser and refresh. And here is my profile photo. This one from here is the same one. Let's continue. We'll have a form with a text area and let's say a class PG red 300 just so we can see it. Content, content and rows two, I think. Let's refresh and we need to align these two. So we're going to do flex here. And to make sure the form is pushing the avatar and occupy more space, we'll do flex one and then ML two. So we can have some margin here. Or let's do four so we can align it with Brandon or Branson. Here it is. Then the text area needs to be full. Text large. Focus outline none padding and resize none so we can hide that little resize handler. Refresh and this looks decent. Okay, let's remove the background for now. Add the placeholder and the label. Refresh. And let's continue with the submit button. So I'm going to add a new div, which will be flex, justify, and, and border, top. Flex and justify so we can push the button to the right. So button, tweet, and refresh. And here is my button. What's up with this weird stuff? Let me check the tweet. Yeah, I have this here. Refresh. Okay. Now let's style the tweet button. We can use the same styling from the follow button. Following button. So I'll grab this. And 
Let's see how it looks. Refresh. Oh, close enough. We'll need BG blue 500 text white refresh. And let's also remove the min width and increase the height. Looks decent. We are also missing the border top. So let's add it. It's for border top. Hmm. Where is it? Oh, it's border T. Yeah, tailwind. Okay, we need some padding as well. So PT2. And that looks okay for now. And let's turn this into a reactive form. So we'll add a submit handler with prevent, which we'll call a submit method that we'll add later. This should have a V model form.content. And let's add the data. form content, which will initially be an empty string and methods. We need to have submit. And let's console log the form. Refresh, inspect the console. Tweet. And here is our content. The next thing we need to do is to create an endpoint for us to submit this form to. So we'll go to web and add a new route. It will be a post, route, post, tweets, and tweets controller, and store. Let's name it as well. So name will be tweets.store. And of course, we need to create this controller. PHP artisan make controller and import it. And let's add the store method. So we have public function store. We receive the request as a parameter. And the first thing we need to do is to validate the request. Now, here is a pro tip. Currently, we don't have any validation on the front end, but that's great because front end validation can easily be tricked. By starting with back end validation first, we can make sure we never ever forget to add it. Always validate both on the client and more importantly on your back end. Front end validation is easy to trick, back end not so much. So we'll do request validate content is required and maximum of 270 characters. Now we need to create a tweet. So we'll do tweet, create, content will be request, input, content, user ID will be request, user ID, and then we'll just redirect back. So return, redirect, back. And this should work. Let's try and submit the form. So we'll, instead of console log it, we'll do this inertia post and we'll do tweets this dot form. Let's go. Refresh test. Do a tweet. Oh, we need to pass in the preserve state false. By default, inertia preserves the state. Let's try again. And here it is. Let's also add a validation error message under the text area. So we'll do span and let's say page dot 
props dot errors dot content of zero and let's try this out refresh cannot read property zero find find yeah we need to check this first so we'll do v if refresh and we get something back but i'm not really sure what this is what's with this t oh without a zero let's yeah so we now get the content field is required let's style this a bit so i'll do class text sm text red 600 and y2 let's try again refresh submit yeah this is a bit better though the margin won't work because it's a span so change that to p it's better so this will be a paragraph and let's also add a border for the text area so we'll do class border border red 500 or 600 if we have an error for the content refresh tweet and that's more like it so let's reduce this to 300 and make it rounded and also reduce the margin here Okay, this is decent. This will rarely happen because we'll also have some front end validation in place that will disable the tweet button, but it's good to have nonetheless. The next thing we need to do is to display a remaining characters counter. This will also help us disable the tweet button when the tweet content is too long. So we'll add it here. Let's say text gray 400. Let's add some placeholder and some margin. So MR4. Or even better, we can add it using the space class. Space X4. Back and refresh. And here we have 280. Let's align this with item center. Refresh. And here it is. Let's add a computed property called remaining chars. So add computed. And this will basically be return 270 minus this dot form dot content dot length. So as soon as I'll start typing, this number will decrease. Oh, we got an error. We cannot read property content of undefined form. Refresh. And yeah, we have a, an additional bracket here, but it does work. So we are good. Where is that bracket? Here it is. Let's also make our remaining characters red if they go past zero. So we'll have class text red 600 if remaining chars lower than zero. If we refresh and add a lot of text, yeah, the remaining characters is red now. Now the next step is to add a disable button or to disable the tweet button. So we'll add disabled and we'll have an additional computed property called can submit. And this will act as a guard. We'll go here, can submit. And we won't be able to submit when the 
content is empty. So this content form content length and this remaining characters must be bigger or equals to zero. So we can only submit the form when we have some tweet content and at least zero characters remaining. Let's test it out. Oh, here it needs to be if it's disabled, if it can submit, so it's negative. Let's refresh and tweet. Go to network. And of course, the button is disabled. Let's add some styling to signal the user that the button is disabled. You can do that here, style, scoped. We'll say button disabled opacity 75% and cursor not allowed. Refresh and here it is. Once I type something, the button is available. It would be nice if we show a spinner when submitting the tweet. So let's add a loading property, set to false. And then when submitting, we'll set this to true. And here, we can put this in a span. And luckily, I already have a spinner. Spinner and margin right one. And this should be visible when it's loading. Let's refresh and slow down the internet. And here is the spinner. Tweet. And it resets. The last thing we need to do is to make the text area resize itself when entering more than just a few lines of text. We can do that with an event on input, we'll trigger a method called resize text area and then go and define it. We'll have methods resize text area and here we need to grab a reference to the element and set its height to be its scroll height. So we'll do const text area equals this refs text or tweet content text area style dot height will be text area scroll height pixels and we need to add this reference to our text area input so we'll have ref equals tweet content. And now we should be good. Let's refresh. Go online, refresh again. And add some text. And here it is, it's growing. But we need to make it go back to normal once we remove the text. And to do that, we just need to make sure that before we set the height to be the scroll height, we reset this to its initial value. So this style height is initial. And this should work. Refresh, text, and go back down. And sure it does. Creating, and submit. That was it. Now that I finished recording, I feel like I lost a ton of time on design and tailwind stuff. Write in the comments, should I continue like this and include the design process, or should I skip it and go straight to Vue.js and Laravel stuff? In any case, if you like this video, subscribe, click the bell button. Bye!